right. So we are back. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> wait a minute. Yeah, better than before, as if that was possible. <laughs> Oops, wait a minute. Uh, but it's short in prison here with my man, Handsome Shrek. Hello, hello. We are waiting on the imminent arrival of King, King Nana. Nana. If he can actually find out where exactly we are. We had some uh, some scheduling and technical difficulties today where we had all the conference our... rooms were used. We so had to change the studio. We had, we had to change studios. And uh, we had to go to Plan B and, and uh, bring in a... A guy from the pen, the left-handed, throwing heat to figure out how to get this thing started. Throwing the sinker. <laughs> the sinker. <laughs> I'm disputing your heat. <laughs> you don't want the heat? I don't want the heat. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, it's been, it's been way too long since we've come to you with the podcast. A lot of shit going on in the world, most of which we ain't even going to talk about because... Everyone else talks about it. That's right. And we ain't got time for that shit. <laughs> we want you to be entertained. Oh, you're not entertained. So, I found out the other day that my guy, Handsome Shrek, here has a new hobby. Ooh. So, I'm interested in learning more about it. And the funny thing is that King Nana also has this hobby. And you kids didn't know. Yeah. Does anyone care to guess? <laughs> we got our first caller coming in. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but let's talk about it. So 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 you you got this new thing. What's your thing? Oh, we did. I feel like we built it up to be so it's a, a secret hobby. It's not really a secret hobby, but it's a hobby that I feel like people. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's, it's making. It's back. making its way back. It's making its way back. I think it's making its way outside of, um, we'll call it the pretentious, like uh-huh. snobby, like young kid who thinks they know what they're talking about type of thing. Okay. Um, kind of like how I'll say this. It has to do with uh, what you saw in the craft beer industry. How remember at a time when at one point craft beer was like oh IPAs and you had the, the beer snobs. You go into a certain area place and you, you try to order like a mainstream, oh, we don't sell that cheap stuff here. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like how that was like very, like, I, I, I don't know how to describe it other pretentious. I feel like my hobby, guys, is cigar smoking. Boom, boom, boom. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, he was going to do a boom, boom. <laughs> It's not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually real. No, but I mean, I, I feel like just, well, and this is me talking as a complete novice and a new person entering. Right. So let's, I guess let's, let's start there. How did you get into it? When did it start? How did it start? Let's do that. Well, I think it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Guys, guys, guy mentalities are very interesting. Uh-oh. Think about, no, for no, think about this. Think about the last time, if speaking to the guys out there or women who observe and see your significant others or, or any, any male person in your life, how many times do guys have that one on one, like, guy to guy talk? Where, like, girls kind of get together and have like, the girl talk and mm-hmm. they kind of ch- chat about life mm-hmm. outside of us talking on this podcast. Right, because we. I mean, we can talk, talk about, about it. about life here on this podcast. All the time. But, I mean, you really think about it. Guys need, I don't want to call it a distraction, mm-hmm. but guys don't get together just to sit around and talk. Oh, let's go get, let's go get a drink of water and hang out and just, just talk. No, guys bond and talk. Some of the best conversations you have is when two guys are doing, we'll call it, quote-unquote, manly stuff, mm-hmm. whether or not it be... Guys going out hunting, the guys doing some sort of activity. Well, what better activity that other than something that keeps you uh, immobilized? You're in one spot where it's just you kicking back, relaxing, forty-five minutes to two hours, depending on the cigar, and all you got there is time for conversation. Ah, so I see. So this is this is how it started. This is 
this is the uh, the genesis of where it all began. Yeah, where it all you began. You needed something to do so that you can sit down with your guy friends no, and well, talk. Really, it started with me and my pops. Ah, yeah. Now we're talking. Yeah, we finished building up some stuff in the backyard. Um, had the deck all finished up, and he himself, he likes himself a good cigar here and there. Mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, well, I know he likes his cigar. I know he likes his scotch. Got all this stuff together. Hey, bring 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 a couple of. Uh, Cigars over. We got these. Finished up the deck. Kicked back. Relaxed. Had two hours of just smoking and just everything else in the world. Pause. Goes on pause. Oh wow! So everything just melted away. Melted away. It was just you and pops talking. Yeah. Now nah, that's beautiful. So I mean, you think about it. Guys don't call it. I don't know if you want whatever you want to call it. You you people today and I remember growing up, hang out with your guy friends. You're playing video games and all. You're doing mm-hmm. some sort of activity. Right. I'm not speaking for all women, but I feel like women sometimes hang out just to talk. And that's the activity. Mm-hmm. Guys don't... Got, that's not an activity for guys. Right. There has to be something else and then talking is involved uh, with it. Yeah. <laughs> and enter the cigar. So it's just you and the cigar and then your surrounding company. And that's it. Yeah, that's good stuff. I'm trying to think of any hobbies or anything like that that I have, and I don't think I have one. But and now you got me interested. Well, and this is this is the this is where I see it as a hobby, because there are so many. I know people talk. Oh, well, you, you say cigars, people think immediately because this is me. You think tobacco. You think tobacco. You think cigarettes. Mm-hmm. Cigars, disgusting. It has to be disgusting, just like cigarettes. Not even the same category. Cigarettes are nothing but chemicals and. You would actually, it goes into your lungs, and there's actually, if you look it up, there's studies with cigars that having a cigar a day or like an average of around a cigar a day or a couple cigars a week mm-hmm. has no true negligible impact to your exposure to any type of lung cancer or any kind of cancerous byproduct from the tobacco because there's no chemical being burned. It's so what, simply tobacco. So, so the difference, the difference between cigarettes and cigars are the the, the extra carcinogens and the, and the fact of inhaling. You don't inhale a cigar. You inhale a cigar. Good luck. It's going to be a nasty experience. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to feel well. <laughs> <laughs> so, so with with uh, with cigars, it's just it, it's just it's just the taste, and it just goes in your mouth. It doesn't go. It doesn't go down your throat, into your lungs, yep. into your system. And unlike like a chewing tobacco where you're, you're constantly, I'm, I'm sure there's probably associated increased risks with some sort of mouth cancer. Oh, not or anything. Yeah. But I mean, that's, yeah. you, you, you drink too much soda, you have an increase for stomach cancer. I don't know. Like across the board, there's everything has give and takes. Right. Um, this one, unlike other unhealthy habits, say drinking alcohol, liver disease and everything else Mm -hmm. to me it seems like something that isn't necessarily a for the trade-off you got to have fun pleasures in life right and this is true (laughs) and i mean your call everything in 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 life has a cost the cost for this isn't really uh, i'll pay the admission (laughs) you're you're down with that (laughs) (laughs) well and then the other thing with cigars people think okay well you got to drink you gotta drink scotch or you gotta drink bourbon. You don't have to. You could be on AA in AA and be alcohol free, right? Mm-hmm. And be a cigar smoker. Because why? Cigars have so many different tastes from like coffee to like that woody or leathery taste. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I had for the first time black coffee with a cigar and it was damn delicious. Yeah. Yeah. So the, so the the tastes complement each other. It's but it's weird. Every cigar is different. Every cigar uh, has different tastes, different flavor profiles. So, so so right now, do you have a favorite or one that you go to? I want to try. Well, here's the thing that in everything that I read, being a novice going into it, mm-hmm. one of the uh, the biggest tips I see like across the board all the time is don't be afraid to try every single type of cigar out there. Because you don't want to think what your taste is, and then you find out you actually have a different taste. It's a whole different... It's like tasting wines. 
you go, oh, I had a real sweet Moscato. It's like your first one. You're like, right. oh, this is the best. But you don't realize that Moscato might be actually like a cheap taste compared to some of the, a red wine. Thousands and thousands of yeah. different wines all around and where the grapes are. It's like, oh, man, I, I, you know what? I had barefoot wine, and it was delicious. I don't want to try any other wine. Yeah. yeah. It's like, okay, well, good for you if you enjoy drinking wine, but if you wanted to actually enjoy different types of wine, you might want to just expand your horizon. And that's what led you into getting into the club that you're in now. So I, I, I did some research reading around. I honestly, I just wanted to, being new to it, I mm-hmm. wanted to go to something where there's all these different clubs, just like how there's different monthly delivery clubs for anything under the sun. To be even like a Harry Potter fan, you get Harry Potter yeah. memorabilia come to your house. Yeah. Um, what I was looking for inside a cigar club was some uh, a club that knows a thing or two about the club, uh, cigars, kind of helps helps a new or a beginner along and or even just give somebody who's extremely experienced in cigars an opportunity to taste limited type of supplies or aged cigars that's really hard to find. And this, I joined the Pravada uh, Farm Roll because there's a wait list on the other club. Mm-hmm. You have to fill out a survey, which they go through and they ask you very general questions, even so that you can answer not even knowing what you like in a cigar. Like, do you like milk chocolate or do you like dark chocolate? Which type of alcohol do you like? No alcohol, vodka, rum, mm-hmm. whiskey. So they get, kind of get in your flavor profile. And they try to generate a big flavor, and they curtail what they're sending you, not in terms of some of these other clubs I, w- I would read reviews, and more or less the old style of clubs was, let, let we'll go ahead and send you the stuff at a discounted price of what we, want, what we aren't selling. And here you gotcha. go, here's, here's everything. Have here's at whole, it. Have, hey, go Enjoy. Ahead. But this is like one of those, and I think clubs, I guess, from what I understand, and so there's a lot of these clubs, they've changed to move, like curate to, these are premier cigars, these are real nice cigars that we think you might like. Mm, okay, based on, based on the questionnaire that you filled out yep. so that they understand. But not limited to just your flavor profile. Ah. It gives you, uh, my understanding is that it'll be full write-ups and let you really experience and dip your toe into to the water, to all these different tastes and flavors. Interesting, interesting. So now the, what what our plan is, and again, King Nana's not in today, or I don't know where the hell he is right now, but uh, but he brought in some examples of, of some that he liked. That he got, I think, in, I believe it's New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. So, uh, so we'd be interested to see that. But the plan is, so next week, what we're going to do is we're going to go out and have a, a, uh, a tasting. Because I, I am a cigar, I'm, I'm less than a novice, whatever less than a novice is, would be what I am as far as cigars are concerned. But, uh, but I do it for the people. Look, hey, I say maybe this all ends up working out to a point where, because King Nana's already saying, hey, let me know what, what club you're in. I mean, I'll probably sign up too. And the thing with that club, it's not like some uh, 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 this multi-billionaire who's part of the club gets a special edition monthly release of the stuff. No, the person who is a college student that's in the club versus the person who owns their own multi-million dollar business that's in the club, they get the same exact cigars in that pack. Same availability, minus whatever curated little right. differences. Right. Uh, there's nuances, so it's not like there's any difference in availability. So it might be like a, like a book club. Oh yeah. Give so her own. Like, can do. Give her own little like opinions on the. Yeah. And we'll let everyone know in the podcast. So this this should be fun. Now the only reason why we didn't do it today is because I'm still on my my Reset. detox, and uh, which is actually going quite well. So in the last week of that. And I'm already down 10 pounds over these past two weeks. So this is something that I really needed to do because, you know, Rona and COVID had my fat ass sitting around eating donuts and Doritos. So, uh, so we're, we're hear, getting it back. We're getting it back. You know what I hear is really healthy? What's healthy? Smoking cigars. Smoking cigars. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> I hear there's health benefits to it. So, so you don't get the munchies or anything while you're... Uh... No, it's weird because there's... And this is this is me still learning about it. 
He's a learning. Learning experience. Right? I'm sure he, there's, down, there's probably people that banging on their phone or banging These on... These fucking guys. They don't know what they're talking about. Ah. But there's there's two different... Like, a person says, oh, give me a strong cigar. That's strong. It could be strong. I mean, they talk about strength. It's about the nicotine strength mm-hmm. from the tobacco. So really, when you, you go from your, your tobacco plant, the higher it is in the plant, the leaf... Mm-hmm the more nicotine rich that leaf is. And I forget, there's a whole range of like names from like Corona being towards the top to- Wait, what? Corona? Uh-huh. Wait a minute. Wait, what? Or Cora, or it, it, there's a whole list of names in terms of like, example, if you hear someone says that this is a Puro cigar, it means that the facets of a cigar are, built, are, are three things. They talk about the filler, the binder and the wrapper. Mm-hmm. A pura means, and according to, I'm a nerd, so I looked up some of the stuff. Yeah, according to Wikipedia. Go well, ahead. According to Wikipedia, <laughs> accor- according to according to back like we'll call it fifty years ago, sixty years ago, like the isn't what do you mean? Be further back the mobster days where like cigars really were starting to take off in terms mm-hmm. of like all, you had the New York gang like. The quintessential, like, in every like movie. gangsta. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, puffing on their cigar. Yeah. <laughs> the, the basis of whether or not you had a good cigar was whether or not it was a Puro or not, meaning everything came from one location, and that's it all made up your cigar. Mm-hmm. Well, with as quickly as people can trade now with all the new technologies and transport, they combine all these different flavors. So, Puro is... Like say if it's a Nicaraguan cigar, it's all come from from the same place. But a lot of places will take the different flavors. Say it's Dominican Republic, mix it in, and it really mellows out and gives you different flavor profiles. That's where they're talking about the body of where it's like a like medium body, full body. Mm-hmm. So you might say, give me a strong cigar, and it not really have that full body taste. Or you can have a mild cigar, and you can have a full body taste. So there's, it's like a whole... It's like a science to it. There's a huge science to it. Wow. It's, it's crazy. Like, the the differences in taste that you get throughout a cigar and how easily a cigar get, can get ruined by just the way you smoke it. And there's, so there's proper ways to smoke it? If you heat up your, your cigar too much and, like, stoke it, you can end up destroying all the flavors and oils throughout your entire cigar and taint the rest of your cigar and then mess up the taste of the cigar. This is blowing my mind, folks. Yeah. So what is, I guess, what is the proper way? And and we're, we're going to go over this again next week before I get my little sissy ass with a cigar because that could just be all bad. It's all out. about, and this, is, and this goes back, we'll go full circle back to why this ends up being a real... I don't mean to make it a manly thing versus the, any kind of gender thing. Watch out now. Watch out. But I think the reason why a lot of men or anyone can really get into smoking a cigar and you really sit down, it's just you and a cigar, is and why it's so, I'll call it zen, almost meditation like, is there's a cadence to how often you smoke your cigar and it's. They say to start out, just give you a range and a feel. Once every forty-five seconds, you smoke again, and you don't you leave the ash as long as it, you feel the ash out itself. If it's a, a premium cigar where you're made like accordion style, where it's one tobacco leaf that goes throughout the whole filler, it runs the length, so the ash actually holds a lot longer than people would think, mm-hmm. because it's not like just dropping off because it's just a blended like a blender mix of right. tobacco in there. But that actually keeps the embers of your cigar cool because you don't want it to be too hot. You want to keep the oils. Mm -hmm. So that cadence of once every like 45 seconds, some cigars are older and require you to actually stoke it or not stoke it, but like smoke it more often to keep it lit. And that's the big difference between cigarettes, cigars. You know, a cigarette is poisonous and chemically filled Mm -hmm. because you light it and you can put it on the edge of a table and that cigarette will smoke itself until it's done. <laughs> right. <laughs> you light a cigar, a cigar needs to be taken care of, tended to. 
it can go out on you if you're ever here talking during a podcast. And you got to go through the process of relighting it without destroying the taste of your cigar again. I, I, I'm almost speechless at this point. Because, yeah. again, it's one of those things that you never really think about. You never even know well, unless you get educated on it. And, and that's the thing, like, to me, because I... I'm a staunch, like, opposition to cigarettes. Hate cigarettes, don't mm-hmm. like them, don't like that... It's pretty damn disgusting, yeah. Well, I, I don't like that family members smoke them, because it's harmful to them. There's secondhand smoke. Mm-hmm. None of that stuff is actually associated with cigar smoking, but that's actually done in studies. They kind of... You'll see, like, all cigars and tobacco, secondhand smoke, and they'll surgeon warnings and stuff yeah. like that. But that's just like general warnings on tobacco products. Uh, it, but the studies don't show that there is, there's no such thing as secondhand smoke on the cigar. From a cigar. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, the ash smell from a cigar, like if someone butts it out and tries to, which you're not supposed to do, just learning, learning etiquette, because I don't look like an idiot, that may, creates like a real nasty ash, like disgusting smell. Mm-hmm. The cigar itself, granted, any cigar, I think, can be overpowering, and if you're not used to that smell or don't like it, it's, uh, but it's not, there's no secondhand smoke from it to where you're damaging your lungs because you're sucking it in like a cigarette smoke. So for each, for each cigar, do you smoke it down to the end, or do you smoke, 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 and then stop, and? Well, so it's interesting you said that. Um, each cigar basically has, it's in th- they call it their thirds. There's the first third, the middle third, and the final third. And the flavor actually changes throughout your cigar. So you have three different, I call it flavor profiles as you move through the cigar. Mm-hmm. Cigar might start off peppery, and when it gets into that middle third, it smooths itself out. That's why, like, I don't understand what the heck these, how these guys are picking out their tobacco and binding it properly and filling it to where it changes this flavor as it goes through. But um, uh, there, what they say is, rule of thumb, if you have a 45 minute cigar, if you don't have 45 minutes to smoke it, don't smoke it. You have a two hour cigar, you don't have two hours to sit down and actually devote to that cigar, don't smoke it. So, so, so wait, they actually tell you how long it, sh- it should last? Each cigar, depending on their size and gauge, you yourself, you'll, you'll be able to, like, kind of determine yourself uh-huh. whether or not it's uh, a Churchill, which is, like, that seven, seven and a half inch cigar, like a 54 gauge, how round it is. That might take you on average two hours. You can kind of keep track of it so that if you come back to certain cigars, you know your expectations. Gotcha. And that's, like, the the number, like, the first two questions to to ask, or I guess some of the people going into a cigar shop, go in there and you say, hey, I don't know what I'm doing. The first couple questions I'll ask you is, how long do you want to, do you want the cigar to last? And, and that pretty much automatically goes and helps them, all right, here's your options. What do you like a stronger, or a, what kind of body or what kind of flavor do you like? Mm-hmm. Like peppery or this, it helps them with some other selections. So once you have the cigar, people say, "Well, it's your cigar. You can do whatever you want with it." Some people, apparently, which I don't, I don't get because I'm not rich, will only smoke two thirds of it, and they go, "I don't like the last third," and just throw the cigar away and start another cigar. Start another. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Well, sorry, I just I talked the entire. I, I love it. Cool. I yeah. love it. No, because this is good. And again, this is just, this is just part one, kids. Come back next week when we actually do a taste test. Or I guess not even really a taste test, but these guys are gonna make me smoke one or a third of one or something. I don't know how we're doing. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll do. How about this? Have people. We'll, we'll put the put this on Instagram, Facebook. Have the people listen to it. If there's anybody out there that smokes cigars, throw out a couple suggestions, and before our next podcast, we'll go over to that one walk-in humidor shop and see if we can't find ourselves like a a couple forty-five minute cut like size cigars and maybe a couple of ones that people suggested and we'll we'll go for it i like the way you're thinking now it's funny that you mentioned that that place now this is a uh it's a cigar shop 
that's that's right near our favorite faux place. Oh, We've been God. going to this faux place for <laughs> four years. Four years minimum. <laughs> now, I knew the shop was there because I actually got I actually got cigars when B the trainer was born. So I went there to get cigars to hand them out to to uh, to our associates around here. And I never thought about the the shop again. It was just you know I I googled you know closest cigar shop, so I went and got some. I had no idea. I didn't know anything about any of this. I just went and grabbed I think a a dozen cigars or some shit, the cheap stuff because that you know, I mean, come on, thrifty is what I call myself. So I was when 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 Shrek brought it up the other day that that he was into cigars. I was like, hey, it's a shop by. By the faux place, you know, in between the faux and the, uh, the Asian market. He's like, what are you no talking way. about? There's no what way. What are you talking about? So it turns out that, yes, it is there, and we passed it so much, but we're so fucking fat and hungry that we just worry about going to the faux place. Mind you, <laughs> this thing is between the faux place and the, this Korean marketplace Yes, that we would go into from time to time after faux to go get donuts. <laughs> so we would pass it twice, one passing it and back. But yeah, so that just goes to show you how fat we are and, and how determined we are to eat as opposed to anything else. But uh, but yeah, so join us back next week. Let us know if you guys have any. Uh, definitely, definitely. Any, let us you, know. Like I said, we're all we're all beginners here, but we can make smoking cigars. We can make it a thing. We can make it a thing. We can make it a thing. We'll bring it into the new era, the new age. I mean, why not? Something good's got to come out of twenty twenty. Goddamn it. Why not? I mean, at least that gives everybody a way to to calm down. Everyone's so high strung right now. Yeah. And it's it's calming down not as a, like, let me go get blackout drunk or any other kind of inhibit your mind. No, it's zen. Zen. Go ahead and get your thoughts in order. Woosa. Woosa. (laughs) Woosa. And it tastes great, too. And it tastes great, too. So there it is, folks. We are out of here. Tell everyone good night, Shrek. Good night, Shrek. Good night, everyone.